just want to tell you what the plan is for the rest of the course. Uh, so this will be the last substantive lecture in the course. Uh, so whatever I get through today, that's what's going to be covered up to on the exam. Uh, Friday, I want to take up quiz two and then uh, tell you about the exam. Um, and then I guess the week after, there's an exam. Um, and then we'll be done the course. Um, assignment three is mostly marked, I think. I haven't checked to see what the TAs have actually managed to finish. Uh, assignment four, uh, five, and six will be returned before your exam. Um, and it's probably going to be me marking them uh, because the TAs are, a lot of our TAs are undergraduate TAs and they can't really mark during the exam period. Uh, so I will resume marking uh, for the rest of the assignments. Any questions about what's going on today and on Friday? All right, did anyone in here write the deferred exam? Anyone, anyone, yeah, okay. All right, so the topic of today's lecture is lists. Um, probably only gonna get through array-based lists. If you're in SIS 220, you've already seen this, so um, there's nothing significantly different in SIS 220 here. Uh, so a list is a finite collection of elements held in a linear sequence. Right? So in other words, uh, in a list, you can get an element by its index, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, up to n minus one. Uh, you know that there's this class called ArrayList in the standard library, right? Uh, you, I've mentioned that there's a class called LinkList, but we haven't actually used it for anything. Uh, the reason we haven't used it for anything is because generally LinkList is much slower than ArrayList. Um, now hopefully what uh, the, this lecture, and there's supposed to be another lecture after this, but hopefully what this lecture shows you is uh, why is ArrayList fast, right? Uh, and then, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna get to linked lists, but um, uh, if I did get to linked lists, you'd be able to see why are linked lists typically much slower than array lists. Right? And when would you choose to use a linked list versus when you choose to use an array list. Right? All right, so I don't wanna implement Java's entire list interface because it's quite big, right? The collections interface is fairly large. Uh, so I just wanna do a subset of the list interface. Uh, so we wanna be able to get the size of a list we want to know if a list is empty. Right? I'd like to be able to get an element out of a list, and I'd like to be able to replace an element in a list. Uh, one of the problems with the Java naming convention for their standard library is um, this thing called set. Um, it really means replace. Um, it, I'm not sure why they called it set. Uh, it confuses a lot of new programmers. Um, if they'd called it replace, um, the confusion would go away. Add adds to the end of the list. Add at an index, inserts into the middle of the list. This is another confusing method, right? This version of uh, add is really insert. If they had named it insert, a lot of problems would go away. And then we'd like to remove using an index. Uh, and finally, probably not gonna get there. Uh, we would like to implement an iterator for our list class. Um, I suspect I won't be able to get that far in the lecture. Okay, so we're gonna call this a S list for simple list. Uh, I want to implement the uh, iterator interface so I extend the uh, iterable interface, right? By extending iterable, I get uh, the iterator method, right? Uh, and then the rest of the interface is, you're, you should be familiar with this by now, right? It's pretty similar to a stack or a um, stack or queue interface, right? Size and is empty, they're even implemented, uh, well, is empty is even implemented the same way. Right, so we've got this interface, now we want to make an array-based list. Right? And an array-based list is pretty similar to an array-based stack. Right? There's only, um, right, so adding to an array-based list is like pushing an element onto the top of a stack, right? Uh, removing at the end of a list is like popping uh, an element off the top of the stack, right? Um, get, pretty straightforward, we have an array, so you just have to go into the array at the specified index and get the element. Right, set, same thing, just go into the array, change the specified element, right? Adding at an index and removing from an index, um, those take a little bit of explanation. Otherwise, everything's pretty similar to how you implement a stack. Right? So inserting an element into the list uh, and removing by index, um, you need to see some pictures of how this actually works. Right, once you see the picture, it'll become obvious why uh, these operations are quote unquote slow for an array-based list. So if I have a list here, this has um, nine elements in it, 
right? So notice that the list always keeps its elements compacted, right, in the array, right? That is, there's no gaps anywhere in the array, right? The empty space at the array, that starts at index 9 and goes up to index 15, right? So anything in white is empty, in the, is a free space in the array. If I want to insert an element at index 4, right, and then the way this operation works is you move all the elements from 4 to the end of the list, right? I need to move them over one to the right so that I can free up this position here so that I can insert the element at index 4, right? So I want to take those elements shown in red. I want to shift them all to the right by one, right? And then I want to take the new element and add it at in or insert into index 4, right? So I have to shift these elements over, right? And the way you shift those elements over is you start at the end and you just, copy, uh, you just copy it into the next uh, element, next, uh, next element in the array, right? So I take element eight and move it into element nine, right? Then I take element seven and move it into element eight, six into seven, five into six, four into five, right? So if you insert at the front, you have to move all the elements over one position to the right, right? And that, is, uh, that has complexity big O of N. Right? So inserting into an array-based list um, has complex has worst case complexity big O of n, right? Uh, and so uh, if you have to if you have a list, if you have a problem that involves a list and you have to insert a lot into the list, then you may not want to use an array list. Right? There may be a better option. Okay, uh, in s uh, the that add method, so add where you specify an index, is a bit odd because uh, it allows you to add at the end, right? But when you add at the end you need to specify an index whose value is 10, right? And 10 is not a valid index for this, uh, for this particular list, right? So you're allowed to specify the index that it's one greater than the size, uh, sorry, that's equal to the size of the list um, for this particular version of add, right? Which is slightly unusual because that index is technically not valid. Fortunately, if you're adding at the end of the list, you don't have to implement that yourself. Right, you just ask, is the index equal to the size of the list? If it is, just call the other add method, which automatically adds at the end of the list, and let it do the work. Right, so that turns out to be easy to handle. Now, if you want to remove an index, so here I've got a list of 11 elements, and I'd like to remove the element at index 4. Right, so I want to take that element and uh, take it out of the list and return it back to the caller. Right, I don't want to leave a hole in the list. So I don't want to need leave an empty spot in the array. So what I have to do is I have to take all the elements after the one I'm removing, right? So everything's shown in red, and I have to shift them one position to the left, right? So I have to shift them one forward. So the way you do that is you start at the front, right, and move it one position to the left, right? So take element five, copy it into element four, then six into five, seven into six, and then uh, keep on going until you do 10 into nine, right? So now you want to shift elements to the left. Right. Again, if you're removing the front element of the list, I have to move all the remaining elements one position to the left. Right? And that, again, is, has worst case complexity big O of N. Right? So removing from, a list, from an array-based list is also inefficient. Right? Well, quote unquote inefficient. It right? takes time proportional to the number of elements. Right? So once you, just, once you copy the elements over, uh, you're done. Right? And you return the, old, the element that was currently in position four. Right. Uh, after that, you don't have to do anything. All right, so let's look at the actual implementation of the list. Uh, where is it? Generic number four. Okay, so those two pictures that I showed you should make it clear uh, that inserting or removing an element into an array-based list has worst case complexity big O of n. Right, again, because you're moving at worst n minus one elements. So the implementation, well, it's going to look a lot like our stack, right? So for an array-based list, I have an array, right? The type of the array, uh, the, well, the element type is big O object, right? So remember, I can't use E because uh, Java says that you can't make a generic array, right? So I have to make a list, uh, an array of type big O object. Um, and we have the size or the number of elements um, that are in the list. So exactly the same um, as for a stack, right? The constructor exactly the same as for a stack, right? Make an array for ARR, right? set the size to zero. Uh, 
Right? Returning the size is easy because we have, sorry, returning the size is easy because we have a field that represents the size. Right? Adding an element to the end of the array, well, that's just like pushing an element onto a stack. Right? So ignore the if statement. Right? If I want to add an element to the end of the array, right, I know that the first free index is just the size of the list. Right? So I can just set the element at this dot size to elem. Right? And then of course, don't forget, add one to the size. Right? Now, uh, what might I have to do if the array is full? Well, I have to expand the capacity of the array. Right? How do I know that the array is full? Well, the size of the, uh, of the list is equal to the length of the array. Right? And if that's the case, you just use arrays copy of right, to copy the current array into a new array having twice the length. Right? And just reassign that array back to this ARR, and away you go. Right? So add is basically the same as push for stacks. Right? Again, if you wanted to, you could use a loop here. Right? But why use a loop if arrays copy of is going to do it for you anyway? Right. Okay. Uh, I now want a, fun a method called check index because um, setting, getting, removing, and adding by index all involves an index, right? I don't want to repeat all of the um, error checking code, so I'm going to make a separate private method that does the error checking for me, right? Check index, check that that index is between zero and the size minus one, right? So if it's less than zero, we throw an exception. If it's greater than or equal to the size, we throw an exception. Right, and this saves us from having to repeat these if statements all over the place. Okay, so get's easy. You just check the index. Right? If the index is okay, just go into the array at that index and return the element. Right? We need the cast here because this array has type big O object. Right? Or the elements in this array are big O object. So I have to cast to type E because our generic method returns the element type. Right? For set, uh, set uh, overwrites an element and returns the element that was overwritten. Right? So you get the old element. Right? So how do I get the old element? Well, I could just call get. Right? Or I can go into the array and get it myself. Right? By calling get, though, I get the checking of the index for free because get's going to check it for me anyway. Right? So I don't have to repeat the call uh, to check index here. I can just let get check the index for me. Right? And that gives me the element that's sitting at that index in the list, right? And now I just overwrite it, right? So just uh, set uh, the element at that index in the list to elem, and then return the old element. Right? So get and set, pretty straightforward. Uh, add, uh, add an index is slightly more complicated, right? So remember step one, in this particular method, you're allowed to add at the end of the list. Right? So in other words, you're allowed to use an index that's one greater than uh, the normal valid indexes. Right? So that's the first thing I'm going to check for. Right? So if the index is equal to the size, I just want to add to the end of the list. But the method add, uh, where you just pass in an element, already adds at the end of the list. Right? So I can just use that method to do all the work for me. And then I return because um, that method actually adds the element and incre increments the size. Right, so I don't want to do anything else in that case, so we return. Okay, so if the index is, uh, is, between, is not uh, equal to the size of the list, then I have to check it. Right? So if the index is invalid, that'll throw an exception, which is good. Right? If it's valid, now I have to do this shuffle over to the right. right? So move elements at indexes size minus one. Right? So starting at the end of the list, right? I'm going to move them one position forward in the list. Right? So starting at index size minus one, I'm going to move that element to, this, uh, to element size, uh, at the element at index size. Right? Size minus two is going to go to the element at index size minus one, and so on and so on and so forth. Right? So starting at size minus one, right? so i is going to start at size minus one. Right? I have to go down to the index, right? The element sitting at the index where I want to insert at. And I'm going to count down in this case, right? You have a question? Yeah. No. This version of add, 
only has one argument. This one has two. So it's going to call the other add. It's going to call the, that, oh, wait, that add method. Okay, so starting at the end of the list, or the end of the array, now I guess the last element in the array, right? I'm going to move them all forward one position, right? So I'm going to move uh, this element, or copy this element, uh, sorry, copy this element into the next position in the array, right? So the next position is just i plus 1, right? So you should check this. Can this actually throw an exception, right? Because you're using an index in an array. And the concern when you're using uh, an index for an array or a list is, is the index valid? Right? So is i always valid? Uh, well, we know the index is valid because we got past check index. Right? So that's fine. Size minus 1, well, that's valid too for a list. Right? Because the size is always less than the length of the, well, the size is equal to, at most equal to the length of the array. Right? So length minus 1 is fine. Right? So that's no problem. That works. Uh, now, uh, what about that, right? So if i is equal to the size minus 1, right, and I add 1 to it, I end up with uh, this dot size, right? Now up here, right, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, sorry, up here if you pass in the size, right, you end up adding at the end, which is good, right? And uh, so that might expand the array. Right? Now the question is, is, is this the index always valid? Right? So you should think about that. There's a little hint down here. Right? Once you've shuffled all the elements over, you can go ahead and insert the element into the list. Right? So just set the element at that index to um, and then increase the size of the uh, list by one. Right? So there is a potential error in this method. Right? Uh, oh, you can't see that. There's a line down here that says there's an error in the method. Can you see what it is? Right? And so you should um, look over this slide uh, sometime and try to figure out what's the mistake here. <coughs> anybody know what this? I guess we can do it now. Does anybody know what the mistake is? So adding, you're adding an element to the list, right? So if you go back to the original add method, Right? Why is this if statement needed? Because you might run out of space in the array, right? You're in the exact situation over here, right? When you go to add something into the, array, uh, into the list, you might have run out of space in the array, right? So you need to potentially expand the size of the array in this method as well, right? Which you should do right here. And once you do that, this will not throw anymore. Uh, this will not cause a problem. So you need to um, possibly expand the size of the array right here, right after you check the index. <coughs> okay, now what about removing? So removing, uh, I'm just going to shuffle the elements one forward uh, in the array. Right. So step one, right, get the element uh, that's currently sitting at the index, right, because I need to return this element back to the caller. Right. Again, get helpfully checks that the index is valid for me. Right, if it's not, it throws an exception, so I don't have to do the error checking myself here. Right. So if that succeeds, move the elements starting at index plus one. Right. So that's the that's the element one past the one I want to remove. Right. And move it forward in the list. Right. And then go to the next element and move it one forward. And then go to the next element and move it one forward. Right. The position one forward is just i minus one. Right. And you're just going to set that to the element that's at index i. And so that shuffles them all forward, one position um, to the front. Right. Can this throw? Well, what can i be? So i can be up to index plus one. Right. Um, and then uh, it's less than the size. Right. Less than the size. Right. So if i is always less than the size, right, then i is definitely a valid index. Right. Uh, index is valid index. So index plus 1 is valid as long as um, uh, index plus 1 is less than uh, the size, right? So in other words, it's always valid. Oh, i is always valid here, right? Is i minus 1 always valid, right? And so the question is, can this ever go negative? 
right? This can only go negative if i is 0, right? And i can't be 0 because index can't be uh, negative, right? So i has to start at at least 1, right? So in other words, this must be at least 0. So this uh, particular, um, this statement here, right, that never throws an exception because of a bad index. Right? Now I'm going to do something here that I didn't do in the stack. I'm actually going to, uh, I've shuffled a bunch of elements forward in the list. Right? And that means there's two copies of the last element in the list. Right? So in other words, uh, so if, 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 if I have the list A, B, C, right, and I want to remove the A, right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that over to there, and then I'm going to copy that over there, and that's going to reduce the list B, C, C. So now I want to replace this element with the value null, right? Because this element's no longer in the list, right? So I want to null out that array location, right? The reason I want to do that is because if you take a list, so you add a bazillion elements to the list and then you remove them all, right? Uh, if you don't remove the elements, if you don't null out the elements that you removed, right? Uh, then what happens is um, the list still has a reference to all these elements. So in other words, if I don't null out this C, there's always a reference to this C, right? Even if I replace this C, right? So if I replace that C with a D, right, there's still a reference sitting here to the C, right? And so that, that uh, object never gets garbage collected, um, which eventually leads to, which can lead to that um, out of memory problem, uh, which can lead to running out of memory if you have a very, very big list, right? So null out the element so that the garbage collector can do its work and clean up any elements that don't have references to them. Right? Decrease the size of the list by one and then return the removed element. Right? And away you go. And there's your array-based list. Right? Except for the iterator. Right? All right, any questions about uh, the method so far? Okay, how do we implement this iterator? Right? So I have to have, uh, so if I, uh, if a list implements the iterable interface, it has to provide an iterator method, right? Now remember what an iterator does. An iterator is an object that knows how to iterate over the elements of our list, right? So the way we're going to do this is we're going to do it the same way. Uh, well, we're going to do this in a similar way that we implemented the iterator many weeks ago now, uh, at least three or four weeks ago now, right? So I'm going to use a private inner class to implement the iterator. Right. So our method here just returns something called array iterator inside our class. What am I calling the class? Array list, right? Uh, S array list, right? So inside our array, S array list class, I have a private uh, inner class, right? Called array iterator. So an array iterator is an iterator that can iterate over an array based list. All right, so how does this work? Uh, yeah, we can go this way. Right, so, uh, so just to quickly remind you, whenever you write a for each loop in Java, right, the compiler is actually using an iterator. Right? It hides all of the iterator construction from you, and it hides all of the syntax of using the iterator from you, but it's actually using an iterator. Right? So anything that implements the iterable interface, you can write a for each loop on it. Now remember, iterator, it has these methods, has next, next, uh, possibly remove, right? Uh, so remove, um, if you decide to uh, let your iterator remove elements from your collection, right, uh, then you override the default uh, remove method, right? If you decide that you don't want to let your iterator remove stuff, you just leave the default method, and the default method throws an exception when someone tries to call it. Right. So remember, whoa, hang on. Remember what has next does, right? So when you make an iterator, it starts at the beginning of your collection, right? Has next returns true if there's more elements to iterate over, right? Next returns the next element in the iteration, right? So normally what you do is you make an iterator and then you ask, you write a, loop, a while loop, right? So while the iterator has next, right? Inside the loop, you do, um, uh, you call next to get the element, uh, to get the next element in the iteration. What remove is supposed to do, so we haven't talked about remove yet, 
So the remove method in the iterator interface removes the element that was most recently returned by next. Right? So in other words, you have to call next first before you call remove. Right? And you can only call remove once every time you call next. Right? So the way you use this is you call next to get the element in the iteration. Right? If you want to, you can remove uh, that element from the collection. Right? And that's it. So normally what happens is you're iterating using the loop. Right? You call next once inside the loop. Every time you call next, if you need to, you can call remove. Right? So you're only allowed to call it once for every call to next. Right? Uh, remove should throw this exception if it's called without first calling next, right? or if remove has already been called after the most recent call to next. Right? So in other words, if you try to call remove twice for one call to next. It turns out that uh, if you it using an iterator, it's the only safe way to uh, filter a collection. Right? So filtering a collection means looping over the collection and removing elements as you loop. Right? So in other words, if you try to write a for each loop on a list, right? So for each uh, uh, so for each string s in this list, right? Say if the string length is less than two, you call you call the remove method on the list to remove the element. Uh, what you'll find is that your loop will eventually, uh, probably will immediately crash, right? The only safe way to remove stuff from a list or a set when you're iterating over the list or set is to use an iterator, right? So this is an example here. So here's an example of how you would use an iterator, right? So I have a list T, right? It can be a list or a set, right? So any collection, right? I can get an iterator for my list or set by calling the iterator method. Right? Here we're assuming that our list, our collection is a collection of integers. Right? So my iterator, uh, its generic type is integer. So that indicates that this iterator, when you call next, returns a big I integer object. So we start out at the front of the collection. Right? The loop runs as long as iter, next, iter has next returns true. Right? So remember in a for loop, that second thing there, that's a condition, right? That's the condition that determines when does the loop run, right? It's true for the loop to run, right? So iter has next must return true for this loop to run, right? When it returns false, there's nothing left in the collection, right? Notice that there's no update condition uh, in this particular for loop, right? So the update condition here, normally in a regular for loop, an accounting style for loop, right? There would be an I plus plus at the end here, right? So advance I to the next, uh, advance, so add one to i, right? Here, we're just gonna call next, and that advances the iterator to the next position, right? So calling next gives us the next element in the iteration, right? If that value is less than zero, you can remove it, right? And notice that this here, this, um, this loop body here, right? It calls remove at most once for each call to next, right? Uh, which, is the, um, which is the correct way to do things. So that's how you filter um, a list or set using an iterator. So for an array iterator, uh, so I guess for a list iterator, um, you can think of the iterator as sitting between elements. Right? So most of you, you know, you use like Word or something like that, right? Some sort of text editor. You know that there's a blinking cursor, right? If you've ever looked closely at the cursor, right, you'll notice that it's usually between two letters, right? So my cursor here is between the Y and the I. So for an iterator on a list, you can think of the iterator as being between two elements at all times. Right? So here, my red arrow, that's my iterator. Right? So that's sitting between indexes seven and eight. Right? The, thing that it's in, the thing that it's immediately after, right? so it's immediately after the element at index seven, right? we're gonna store that index in a variable called previous, right? and then the element that's immediately after the iterator, right? So the element at index eight, we're gonna store the index in a field called next. Right? So calling, so with this iterator, if I call next, right, it's gonna return the six, right? The next element in the iteration, right? Previous then, so previous is the index of the element that was returned by the previous call to next, right? The most recent call to next. 
right? And next is the uh, index of the element that will be returned by the next call to make. Right? So when you call next, the iterator advances one position, right? So it moves from here to d between the six and the ten, like that. Right? So calling next returns the six, advances the iterator to the next position. So it's now between eight and nine. When the iterator hits the end of the list, right? So when it, there's a total of 15 elements in this list, right? When it gets to the end of the list, right? Not the end of the array, right? The end of the list, right? Has next at this point returns false, right? There is no element here to return, right? If you call next with this iterator, it throws an exception, right? Because there's no next element in the iteration. Okay, so at the start of the list, right, the iterator is sitting at the front of the list, right? So there is no previous element, so I'm going to set previous to minus one in this case, right? So a negative value for an index always indicates, uh, for, I guess a negative value for previous indicates that there is no um, previous element. Okay, so how do you implement this thing? So, um, inside our list class, or our S array list class, right? We have a private inner class. This is actually a nested inner class, or just inner class, right? Uh, that implements the array iterator. So we have two fields, right? One's next and one is previous, right? Now remember what this inner class is allowed to do, <coughs> right? So there's no static word here, right? If static were here, this is just a, um, this is just an, sorry, what's it called? Uh, it's just a nested class, right? Because static's not here, this is an inner class, right? And in the inner class, object has access to the fields from the enclosing class, right? So that means our array iterator class has access to the fields of S array list. So it has access to the size of the list, which is handy because I need to know when does the list, when does the iterator stop, right? And it has access to the array of elements in the list, which is also handy because I have to return values from that array, right? So this must be an inner class and not a static uh, nested class. Right? In a static nested class, you don't have access to the uh, fields from the enclosing class. Okay, so the constructor just sets up an iterator that starts at the beginning of the list, right? So it's the next index is zero, right? So in other words, when I call next, I'm gonna return the first element in the list, right? And there is no previous element, so I'm gonna set previous to minus one. Right? So how do you implement has next? Well, it's pretty easy, right? You just check, is next less than the size of the list? Right? If it is, then there's something else still to visit in the list. Right? You just go back to the picture. Right? So here, the size of the list is 15. Right? Next, in this case, is 15. Right? It's, gonna, it's the index of the next element. Right? So it's going to be 15. Right? So is 15 less than 15? The answer is no. Right? And so has next here should return false. Right? Anywhere else in the list, say here. Right? Next would be 10. Right? Is 10 less than the size of the list? The answer is yes. So there is something left to visit. Right? So the condition here is straightforward. You just look at next and check if it's less than the size of the list. Now what about the next method? So the next method returns the next element in the list if there is one. Or the next element in the iteration if there is one. Right? If there isn't one, you throw an exception. Right? So if has next is false, throw an exception. If you get past the if statement, has next must be true, so you know there's something left, right? So what element do you return? You return the element at next, right? How do I get the element to next? Well, I can go into the array if I want to, right? So I can write s array list dot this dot, what's it called? I forget what it's called, ARR or something like that? Whatever the array name is, right? And then square brackets this next, right? It's easier just to call get in this case, right? So I can call the get method on the enclosing list, right? Again, notice the very bizarre syntax, right? If you're inside an inner class and you want access to a field belonging to the enclosing class, 
right? It's the name of the enclosing class dot this dot whatever the field or method is, right? Syntax is awful. That's just the way it is, right? Uh, it's the way they decided to implement this, right? Oh, here it is right here, right? Slightly more efficient would be s array list dot this dot arr this dot next, right? So in other words, go directly into the array, right? And grab the element out of the array, right? This is slightly more efficient because get uh, performs an error check, right? It tests if the index valid. But here you know the index is valid, so it does an unnecessary error test, right? So that's the element to return. Now I just advance the iterator, right? So this next, I add one to it. This previous, I'm gonna not add one to it. Instead, I'm gonna set it to this dot next, right? And you'll see why I don't add one to this previous in a moment, right? And then you just return the element uh, that you got back on the list vector. Right, any questions about next? All right, so it's the reason why I did not add one to previous here is because of remove, right? So how does remove work? So I have an iterator as shown there. Right? Previous is, uh, is equal to eight, and next is equal to nine, right? So in other words, the element that was most recently returned uh, by the iterator was the six, right? If I call next again, it's gonna return the 10, right? But the one that it just returned is the six. That's the element I wanna remove, right? So calling remove should remove the element at index eight, right? Which is stored in previous, right? So I wanna remove the element at index previous, right? And I can do that by calling the array list method remove, right? Now after removing the six, what happens, right? So here's six, 10, four, 14, five, one, 11, right? Now if when I remove the six, everything shuffles forward one position, right? The 10 moves forward, the four moves forward, the 14 moves forward, right? So the picture now looks like this, right? Notice that previous, which is eight, is now the 10, right? But that's supposed to be next, right? I'm supposed to return the next next. Uh, I'm supposed to return the 10 next, right? But because I removed the element in front of it, it's now sitting in previous, right? So next is now the wrong index, right? But that's easy to fix, right? Instead of next pointing at nine, I just subtract one from next and make it point to the eight, right? So just decrement next, right? So that's easy to fix. Uh, but now what do I do about previous, right? So I could decrement previous too and set it to the um, seven, right? So that it points at the 13, right? But remember how um, remove is supposed to work, right? You're not supposed to be able to call remove twice uh, two or more times for each call to next, right? So if I just set previous to seven, right? Then previous, the value of previous doesn't tell me um, if I can actually remove that element or not, right? I'm not supposed to be able to remove this 13 now, right? Because I've called next once and I've called remove once, right? So I'm not supposed to be able to remove that 13. So if I just decrease previous by one so that it points at the seven, right? That's not gonna help me at all, right? But what I can do is I can set previous to minus one to indicate that I can't call remove again, right? So rather than setting previous to the seven, I'm gonna move previous all the way back to the front of the list again and set it to minus one, right? So by setting previous to minus one, that tells me, can I call remove or not, right? So if previous is minus one, I can't call remove, right? Either I'm at the beginning of the iteration and I haven't called next yet, or I've already called remove once for the previous call, to, for the most recent call to next, right? So here we throw an exception if previous is minus one. Otherwise, just remove the element, right? Removing the element straightforward, you just call remove, right? Again, s array list dot this dot remove, right? The awful syntax, right? So just remove the element at that index, right? Decrease next by one, right? Because of this picture here. Right, so I wanna decrease next by one. And then make set previous to minus one, right? Now, because I'm setting previous to minus one to indicate that I've removed an element, right? I can't just add one here to next, right? Because if I just add one to there and I've removed something, then previous now points at the zero when it maybe it should be pointing to something else, right? So here I have to set it to next, right? I can add one to next, 
but for previous, I can't add one to previous to update it correctly, right? I have to set it to this.net. Right? All of these things are very little subtle things that are easy to screw up, right? And you don't realize you've messed up until you've actually tested your code. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I want to start this. Uh, I think I'm just going to leave singly linked lists off and let your data structures instructor tell you about singly linked lists. Right. Um, so we'll stop there. Uh, any questions about today's lecture or the assignment or anything else? No? All right. So on Friday, I will take up quiz two, tell you about the exam, and we'll end the course. So there is no lecture on Monday because I stupidly committed to something. Uh, not realizing that there was a Monday lecture. So we're going to end the course one lecture short, but that's okay. All right, super. See you on Friday or this afternoon or tomorrow in office hours. <laughs>